What's up guys? Welcome back to PJS. Thanks for watching. Thanks for following. We are on day three now of Holy Week or Passion Week, some of you might call it. Thanks for following along. I'm going to read here from Matthew chapter 21, verse 23 to 27. Now, there's actually a much longer passage of what's going on here, but there's just too much to read. No, I'm not diminishing the Word of God, but I don't know if you guys want to hear me read all of that. So I just want to read this uh, one short snippet here and kind of cover the rest and uh, explain a little bit about what's going on. So I'm going to read Matthew 21, verse 23 to 27. I'm going to read from the NIV, the 1984 edition. Jesus entered the temple courts, and while he was teaching, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him. By what authority are you doing these things, they asked. Who gave you this authority? Jesus replied, I will also ask you one question. If you answer me, I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. John's baptism, where did it come from? Was it from heaven or from men? They discussed it among themselves and said, If we say from heaven, he will ask, Then why didn't you believe him? But if we say from men, we are afraid of the people, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We don't know. Then he said, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. Here on day three, Jesus is kind of coming out of that crazy ruckus he caused in the outer areas of the temple courts, cursed the fig tree. Now he's in the temple. And this is actually the last time Jesus teaches publicly before he gets arrested. And like I said, there's a lot more going on here. He goes into a bunch of parables and he teaches a lot. And he kind of goes head to head against some Pharisees. I just didn't want to read all of that. But here is the beginning of people questioning the authority of Jesus. That's what I just read here in these verses. And Jesus goes into this long teaching session of parables, going toe to toe with the Pharisees as they question his authority and people continue to reject him. And he teaches publicly. Like I said before in the other two videos, this is the road to the cross. Jesus is headed to the cross. He's going to die. And here he continues to teach. He continues to teach against these people who reject him, who don't believe in him. And this is Jesus Christ. You know, in the last video I talked about him kind of causing a ruckus and he's still serious about sin. And again, he, he knows he's going to die, and here, he continues to teach. He, can, he continues to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these people who reject him. You know, if you're not a believer, you're not a follower of Christ, that's okay. We can disagree, but I still got love for you. But I hope as you're watching this video, if you are, and you're listening to this, I want you to know that the authority of Christ is real and I hope that one day you will understand what that authority is. You know that word authority is kind of a bad word. We don't like that word. No one likes authority. No one likes to be under authority. We're living in a generation and a time where we're fighting authority. But the authority of Christ is unlike any president, any dictator, any king or tyrant. The authority of Christ, he is the one who will defeat the power of sin, defeat darkness. He is the one who will not only defeat it, but he will show you grace and mercy, what real selfless and self-sacrificial love is. I mean, look at this guy. This guy doesn't try to shy away from the public here. He's not hiding. He knows what's about to happen. He knows as these people reject him, he knows that in a couple of days, he's going to die on the cross. And he desperately, desperately wants these people to know who he is and what the truth is. This is the king. This is Jesus. This is God himself 
in the flesh. What other supernatural being lives like this? What other supernatural being operates like this? He is still teaching. This is Jesus Christ. This is who we are recognizing, remembering during this week. And this is what we're gonna remember this weekend, his death and resurrection. As a non-believer, as a person who doesn't know Christ, I hope you could check out a church. I hope you could check out maybe my church. I would love to meet you. I would love to hear your story. And I hope that you could be interested in who Jesus is. Ask more questions. Get to know some answers to the questions that you have. I would love for you to describe the God you don't believe in. And I bet the God that you describe isn't the God that I believe in. And I would love to have that dialogue with you, a peaceful dialogue. To all church leaders and pastors, I hope you're getting ready for this weekend. This is kind of our Super Bowl weekend, and I hope you're ready to dialogue with all these visitors. You know, yesterday I shared an idea of something you all can do to maybe try to welcome these visitors, these guests to your churches. Here's something else that I think will be helpful. If you're doing this already, that's awesome. And I would love to know what you're doing. Write a comment down below. Let's learn from each other. But here's an idea. With all these people that are coming, let them know of what else is coming up after this weekend. Let them know of other things that you are planning right now. And if you have nothing planned right now, try to plan something. Uh, try to plan some sort of gathering. Try to plan some sort of barbecue or beach day or some sort of kind of fellowship gathering at your church. Get these people to come back. We're not trying to get them back just for the sake of coming back and we just want high attendance at our church. No, get them to come back. A part of committing to a church is consistency. So how can you be consistent if you don't come back? Give them a reason to come back to. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that churches are only successful if you have a barbecue every week. No, but this is a little bit different. We're being a little bit strategic here. So plan something. Plan some sort of gathering. Maybe the gathering is just for first time visitors. Do something fun. Get the pastors up there, introduce yourselves. That's a great, great time to cast vision. But please don't do some 60 minute sermon do some five minute vision and let these people know that you are a pastor, you are a leader that genuinely wants to have a relationship with them, that genuinely wants to get to know them and hear their story. Don't treat these people like a project. Don't make them feel that they, they have to believe in Christ or they're not accepted at the church. Prove to them, show them that you're a church family. Show them that your church will love on them and will walk with them no matter how long it takes to believe in Christ. Some people might be a week, some people might be a year. But plan something after Easter, plan a couple of things. Revolve it around your church ministry, maybe some sort of small group, maybe some sort of kind of singles gathering or married couples gathering. I don't know how your church operates, but plan some events, plan some gatherings that they could come back to, minister to them. I hope you can do that. I hope that many people come visit your church. And I hope for those of you who are watching these videos, I hope that Jesus might be a little bit more interesting to you. And maybe what you've heard isn't accurate. Maybe what you heard in the past isn't as accurate. I hope that this weekend is cool. I hope it's good. I hope it's uh, a large gathering at your churches. Build community, build relationships. Mm -hmm.